Now before we jump into the video here today guys, I want to mention and plug yesterday's video. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link up in the top right. It was myself racing in the F1 Esports Challenger Series. So I do recommend you guys give that video a chance um, and see if you enjoy it because again, it's something new for me. It's a really big challenge and indirectly I found myself actually competing to try and be in F1 Esports. So if you haven't seen it, do check it out. But with that said, welcome back to some more Williams Road to Glory. Today we are here for Zanvor, and as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, it's going to be a pretty spicy race featuring the home hero, Max Verstappen. If you guys are going to enjoy today's video, leave a like. Let's try and hit 1,200 likes on this video. That's going to be the target for this one. Subscribe for more daily content, guys. We're really, really close now to 59,000 subs, and hopefully 60 won't be too far away after that. And yeah, let's get into it, and let's see how we get on around Zanvor. The weather forecast this weekend looks to be dry, which is good, as we then look at the R&D progression chart. And as you can see, we've brought a major aerodynamic upgrade this weekend, and we pull away from our nearest rivals, but still a long way to go, you know, in terms of that battle for the midfield. And teams are bringing a lot of updates, and it's a pretty fierce development race right now in terms of R&D updates. And we've got one more plan for the chassis for the weight reduction coming very soon. So that battle will continue, but it's definitely getting, you know, quite hot and spicy. A lot of teams are bringing a lot of upgrades and everyone's pushing on quite a lot. So we need Williams to kind of deliver here and bring, you know, more facility updates and just try to improve everything around the team so that I can upgrade even more. Um, nonetheless, though, we moved the practice and I had a bit of a moment actually um, in FP1, just struggling with the rear balance a little bit and we actually lost the rear wing and spun out of um, that left hander through the middle sector. After practice, though, in the end, we recovered quite well, scored over 800 points and we take our total up to pretty much 1500. And uh, with that, we take some momentum into qualifying. But overall, you know, that spin and that crash wasn't going to phase me too much. I felt pretty confident, you know, the car felt good around here. Um, that's kind of the risk reward around here. You've got to kind of go for a bit of an aggressive setup with a bit of oversteer, but it does mean you find a lot of lap time. So you've kind of got to weigh it up and, you know, balance it. And uh, yeah, in qualifying, we are going to move the Q1 now. And this is where things kind of, you know, crank up a little bit and we pick up the pace. And uh, this was my first time lap in the Q1 session and very much my banker lap. And to be fair, as far as banker laps go, this was a really strong one. Really, really good lap. And to my surprise, as we run up to the line, we're only going to need this lap to get into Q2. So we set a 1 minute 8.2, a pretty decent lap, comfortably P6 at the time. Um, we would eventually finish the session in P11. And we got through by near enough half a second as George Russell got eliminated in P16 in Q1. So yeah, a really good start to qualifying, pretty comfortable, no big risks. And, you know, we save a set of tires as well. So that's great news for us. And George, once again, out in Q1. We then move to Q2. And going back to that point earlier on in practice about the car being a little bit oversteer, a little bit inconsistent. Um, you'll see through here now, I make a bit of an error, um, bump the curb. I run a bit onto the curb on the exit as well. And then I lose the back end, just, yeah, turning in pretty much slash braking. Uh, again, the rear end instability meaning that we go for a bit of a spin and it's going to ruin that set of tires pretty much so we're going to have to go back to the pits and recover and we then put on a fresh set of, of soft tires and we're going to go for another attempt and hopefully this is the one because we've only got a minute and 25 left so we have to nail this lap so down towards turn one third gear corner trying to pick up a late apex and really try and get that nice exit out of there power down as we then go into the left little left kink into then the right and then the left hairpin Important to double shift through here to get that traction down and to really try and maximize your exit speed as we get the power down along this kind of windy back straight. We then plunge downhill for the end of sector one into this long swooping right-hander. The back end really wants to get away from me through here. We then bring the car back to the left and then feed it into this quick right. Again, this time no issues through here compared to the previous run as we then go into the first of the two hairpins and then the second one, of course, a much longer left-hander. Doing a, a couple of short shifts actually on there using the exit curb to really try and get the power down and open up the corner exit. Then bring the car to the left as we then go into this little right left, which is a chicane slash feeds into a hairpin. Important again to get that short shifting on the exit to get that traction down. And then the penultimate corner, uh, this time I'm actually going to fifth gear, but I usually take fourth. And then keep the car nice and low as we get a bit of oversteer actually through the banking, but luckily no major time lost. And up to the line, we set one minute 7.9 and we go P3 and that will see us out of trouble and comfortably into Q3. So a good lap. We finished Q2 in the end in P5, a 1 minute 7.925 from what I can tell. So a good lap actually. Getting to the 107s I knew would have 
you know, been safe, but we actually made it quite comfortably in fairness. Again, about another half a second to six tenths in our pocket. And uh, worth noting Verstappen and Leclerc getting through on mediums, which is quite interesting. So keep an eye on those guys for the race. But nonetheless, we now move into Q3. Now, again, this one, we've got um, tyres that we saved. So we're going to go for two runs in this session. This was my first time lap. And we've got the 1 minute 7.9 bank reference from Q2 to aim for. So let's see what my first lap in Q3 is across the line. And it's a 7.9 again, but it's a 6.2. So it's slightly slower than the Q2 time, but still, you know, below 1 minute 8, a strong lap and good enough for P4. We now move on to the final lap in qualifying. And this was uh, my last attempt. So let's enjoy it together as we go for a full lap of Zandvoort. And fingers crossed the lap is good enough because there's definitely a 0.8 or a 0.7 if we hook it all up. Here we go then, running up to the line, car to the right-hand side, across the line we go, we improve by the smallest of margins, and we finish in P6. So in the end, not a super strong lap in Q3, I didn't really hit my peak, my quickest lap was actually the one in Q2. So uh, yeah, not the Q3 I hoped for really, you know, the pace wasn't really there for us, and looking at the gaps, I do believe... Realistically, we only would have got P5 at best, you know, um, the top four a bit too far away. So, yeah, worth noting Verstappen and Leclerc got P2 and P3. They're starting on mediums, so that'd be interesting. After qualifying, we lose out to Albon in terms of the driver rivalry, but still a decent session all round, Q3, and car seems to be pretty quick. So I feel confident and optimistic for the race. So let's jump into it and let's see how we get on here on Sunday for the Zandvoort race here for the Dutch Grand Prix. Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and Zandvoort, 25 miles away from Amsterdam and the host for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. A lap of this short 2.6 mile Zandvoort circuit features 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left. The main straight is 678 meters long and heads into turn one, the Tarzan corner. With DRS down the main straight into the braking zone, that could be the best overtaking opportunity on the track. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Young superstar Max Verstappen starts from pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Hamilton, Albon, Martinez, and Gasly, Vettel, Perez, Stroll, and Lando Norris, Bottas. They've taken a grid penalty. Sainz, Daniel Kvyat, and Ocon, Ricardo, Russell, Roman Grosjean, and Kevin Magnussen. Matsushita and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. Here we are then. It's time for the Dutch Grand Prix at Zanville. And we have a massive opportunity here today to score some big, big points. We start from P5. The pace of the car seems very good and traditionally I've had strong race pace here as well. So I'm very much looking forward to this one. I do believe we can hold on to this P5, dare I say, maybe even push for a podium. It depends what strategy other people go for. That's going to be a really key factor in this. 
but I do think we have the pace for this. So I'm going to try my best and work really hard to stay with the cars ahead of us. I think we are going to struggle a little bit on the softs early on. I feel like the overheating could be an issue. But once we get into that hard tile, it's going to be the way to go. Now, the game originally wanted me to go for a two-stop strategy. I'm going to go for the one because I feel like in the past, I've used a hard tire here and I've done a good job with it. So we're going to try and send it and do a one-stopper. So yeah, fuel-wise, we've overfueled by just 0.5 of a lap. I don't want to be too heavy. I want to be a little bit light and to try and take some stress off the soft tire. So yeah, let's jump into it and let's see how the race goes. Okay, here we go. The lights are on. Let's see if we can get a good start here. Lights out, away we go. Oh, it's a good start. The clear ahead on mediums. But this is a good start. We're going to go nice and deep into the first corner. Try and see if we can get ahead of Albon. And the close a bit slow off the exit. We're going to try and fight him here. Go around the outside. And there we go. Great start up into P3. Verstappen in P1 also on the medium tyres here. So we're going to try and use that. Yellow flag behind. Some kind of contact to the hairpin maybe. But what a great great start to the race we've got Leclerc behind is a bit of a rear gunner he's gonna hopefully hold off Albon on who's on the soft tires so let's see if we're snapping out in front of mediums I'm expecting Hamilton to be getting by soon but we'll see what the pace is of the Mercedes relative to the Red Bull but this is exactly what we need here and hopefully now I can try and manage my pace try and make this tire last not kill it off too much trying to overheat it ERS is important we don't want to use too much it's very hard to charge up around here so you've got to be really careful when you use it. I'm just going to try and, you know, stay within a second of Lewis, basically. And that's it. I'm not going to try and overtake anybody just yet. We're just going to be patient and see how the race kind of pans out and opens up. But lap one is in the books. Let's see how this goes. The Stappen's pretty quick. I can't lie. We set a purple sector three. DRS now enabled. But Max is actually pulling away here. And he's about to drop Hamilton out of DRS range, which is something I did not expect. Meanwhile, we're about to drop Leclerc out of ours. If we can have a strong middle part of the lap here, which is where I'm actually a bit slow. So far, tyres are hanging in there. The temps are getting a bit hot. That lockup wasn't ideal at the hairpin. Just going to have to be a little bit careful in terms of, you know, applying minimal wheel lock. And Hamilton drops me out of DRS range now. And Leclerc has got back in. This is where I lose a bit of time. In the middle part of the lap, really. Can't do much about it. Just am slow compared to the AI. A bit of a scruffy one from me there. I've just about managed to keep Leclerc out of the RS range, but a bit of a pole up all round. I need a better one this time around, to be honest, to try and get back on top here. That initial phase of the race now, where I was pushing on the soft tyres, that's gone now. I'm well and truly in economy mode now for both tyre saving, ERS management and fuel management. And also, of course, trying to keep Leclerc behind now. He's got the advantage on those mediums. They're going to be the better tyre. Crucially, though, we have dropped Albon, so he's no longer in the mix, but... We're going to have to watch out with Leclerc now because he's going to be a lot quicker than me. He's getting closer and closer. Oof, starting to struggle now. Tires are starting to go. This one stop is going to be tricky to pull off, I will admit. But the minute Leclerc isn't putting me under any major pressure, Verstappen has to set, I believe, a new fastest lap. So he's pushing out front. He's about to drop Hamilton now with DRS range. So those are mediums are starting to find their pace now. Another fastest lap from Verstappen. He's really going for it. Hamilton has been dropped. And we're pulling away from Albon even more, so we're looking okay, even though we're obviously dropping off the pace. We are holding on and we are solidifying our podium status right now. Okay, Hamilton into the pit lane. He actually closed back up to Verstappen there. He was right on the back of him. He's going for the hard tyre. We're staying out for at least one more. It's going to be very, very tight for us to make it in terms of tyre wear. But I'm probably going to pit this lap, to be honest. I'm going to call it in a lap early and just get those hard tyres on because... The tyre indicator's on, and that means you're usually above 60% on the left front, and I don't really want that, to be honest, so we're going to pit this lap. Understood. Stopping this lap. There we go. And there we go, then. We've managed to hold on and keep Leclerc behind. We're now going to box for a set of the hard compound tyres, and, uh, of course, complete the one-stop. You can see the tyre wet, which isn't ideal. Great pit entry, though. That was really, really nice and late. Okay, hard tyres at the ready. We're going to hopefully have a nice quick stop here. Come on, boys. Lovely. 2.3. Didn't get held. Fantastic. Hamilton's ahead. He's actually gained a bit more time, but that's okay. Norris starting on the hard tyres by the look of it. But there we go then. So, P5 having completed a pit stop. We just need a couple of strong laps here to stay ahead of Leclerc, who should be pitting soon. I'm going to guess he's going to go from the medium to the hard tyre, so 
Just a couple laps here, just to undercut the Kler, try and maybe build that gap a little bit, and we're going to be okay. And there we go, the Kler in the pit lane. So he's going to be on the same strategy as us, pretty much. Let's see if we're ahead of him or not. I think we're well ahead, actually, quite comfortably, and out of the RS range as well, which is important. So there we go, and I didn't use any ERS. I've been trying to save my battery, so that's good. Let's focus on getting past Lando now, and uh, try and use him to kind of separate myself even more. From the club, looks like Hamilton was undercut for Stappen for the race lead, so that's going to be a spicy battle up ahead. I wonder if we can pass Lando here. Don't think we're close enough, but I'll give it a crack. The AI don't usually use the RS in the pit straight, but it looks like Lando is using his right now. This should be a new personal best. There you go, with the purple sector free. And we're dropping the club in the process. Let's try and line up Lando then for the overtake. This shouldn't be too difficult. I wonder if I can be a little bit cheeky here and uh, try something a little bit different. Nah, not gonna happen. I was thinking about the car back there, but we don't quite have to car for that yet. Okay, they should do the trick then. This time we're more than close enough. Let's try to keep it nice and tidy through there. Hit the ERS a little bit through the final corner. Now we're gonna hit it again on the pit straight down towards turn one. Oh wow, that McLaren's got some speed about it, Jesus. Down the inside though. What a dive that was. Whew. Big old send. That McLaren is pretty speedy on the straight, I've got to say. You can notice the Mercedes engine in the back of that thing. Either way, we're through now. Back up to P3. And currently on for our first podium of the season here. As you guys know, this race isn't often the most entertaining. It's just the way that the nature of the track. And if it's bad in the game, you can imagine. It's going to be pretty boring in real life. But nonetheless, we're only five seconds off the race lead. If a snap and Hamilton battle, you never know. We could get back in the mix there. But I don't think I've got the pace for that. So P3 could quite likely be our final destination here today. Well, that's going to take all the pressure off now. Lando yet to pit. The Chloe with issues. That's going to make it very easy for us now to secure this podium so we can just relax now and just bring the car home, to be honest. I don't have the pace to catch the front two. I'm pretty much matching them on certain laps, but when they turn the engines up, I'm a bit too slow. So, yeah, we're going to be just bringing this one home in third place, I think. I just drained my entire battery on that lap to set a personal best. I don't think it's going to be a fastest lap, though. Or is it? Oh, okay, it is. Nice. Gave it a little go, and we've done enough. No ERS left now, they're just fuel, so Norris is still out there, Leclerc dropping off big time. I'm waiting to see where the next car is because I feel like looking at the minimap, I've got quite a big gap. I could actually afford to pit, you know, Leclerc with his car issues, Norris having to pit. I could probably strap on another set of soft tyres and just go for it, basically. We'll see. I'm also very aware there will probably be a late safety car because nothing's happened this race. And we seem to get a safety car every single race at the moment, so I'm waiting for it. Hence why I've used all my ERS, because I know there's probably going to be one, and I'm going to get a chance to recharge my energy anyway, so... There we go, Lando finally pits. This will give us a bit more for an indication, and a bit more of a clearer picture, in terms of what we can and can't do this race. He's going for the soft tyres, so he's going aggressive in this race. Perez 15 seconds behind, that's probably pretty close actually, to a pit stop. And there we go, yellow flag. I've guessed it, and it's Hamilton, I believe? It's Hamilton! Oh my goodness me! I mean, I think we know what's going to happen here. I'm going to wait to see if it's true. Okay, we can take you this lap. I was thinking about pitting there. But you know the one time I'm so confident about our safety car, we don't actually get one? Let's wait and see what happens. I'm going to wait for the confirmation and the retirement, but you just saw Hamilton there up in smoke. So we're now at P2 in this race, which is incredible. And by far, strongest finish of the season. Let's see if we do get that safety car. I'm waiting for it. I'm going to push the ERS and fuel here while I can before it arrives, if it does arrive. There's confirmation. And there we go, safety car deployed. Easy to guess. Right, we're gonna pit this lap. I'm gonna pit and take the free pit stop. Oh, I'm just making sure I run the delta to the finest possible margin here. We're gonna pit. Here we go. I'm gonna slow down for the delta. Into the pit lane we go. And we're gonna box the hard tire, right. Let's see how this goes then. Or for the soft tyre, should I say so. It's going to be a used soft, but that's okay. Away we go, 2.4. And I think we should be in P2 still. Yep, there we go. Lovely. Totally worth it. Three pit stop. And now when the race restarts, 
we're going to have a huge advantage on tyres compared to everybody else, and especially with Verstappen. So we could actually maybe win this race. Okay, safety car in this lap. I'm trying to get some last minute temperature on my tyres. It's going to be tricky, but we'll try and do our best. See if I can get a bit of rear tyre temp. There we go, I should do that. That's enough. That's all we need. I don't need a load of temperature, just enough. But we could challenge Verstappen here straight away. If we can time this right, this could be the one. Timing on this throttle has to be perfect. There we go, straight away. On for the restart. We're going to challenge Verstappen into turn one. Down the inside, Verstappen giving us a squeeze and a half into the wall there. Oh my goodness me, what a squeeze. Verstappen having none of it. We sent it, it didn't work out. We're going to go the long way around at the hairpin, try something else, but it doesn't work. Let's keep pushing though, the AI going to run full power for the next two laps. After that, we've got a chance. Already here, end of the first lap. Do I go for this again? No, I'm not. I'm going to wait. It feels like Max is struggling for pace a little bit, but at the minute he's just draining the battery, so he's able to stay ahead. We'll wait till the end of this lap. Maybe next lap when we get DRS. I want to pass him early though while my tyres are at their freshest point. I don't want to wait too long. Otherwise we could be in trouble. Okay, we need to make sure everything is perfect from this point on. And this could be the one we're going to hit the ERS quite hard here. Through the penultimate corner. That's nice. Getting the power down early. We're going to drain the entire battery here to get this moved on. I don't care. We're going to give it everything. Here we go. This happens pretty speedy. Down the inside we go. This time I'm going to force my way through. He's not going to squeeze me into the wall this time. And there we go. Up in the P1. Race lead with three more laps to go after this one. This is an even faster lap. I'm going to drain the rest of the ERS. But this should definitely solidify the extra point. There we go. Into the 109s. And we've dropped Verstappen almost out of the ERS range. I think this could be the lap we do it. Here we go then. Last lap of the race. Verstappen is putting the pressure on. He's trying to look for a way back pass. My soft tires have pretty much gone now. They've lost all their peak performance. Verstappen's flying on the hard tyre. Here he comes. I'm going to go defensive. Into the chicane. We're going to hold it on the inside. And that should do the trick. Just got to keep it tidy now for a couple more corners. Here we go. Final key break zone. Got to make sure the traction's good out of there, which it is. And there we go. We've done it. We've stolen the win away from Verstappen in his home race. And it's our first win of season two. A difficult race then on a circuit that demands complete concentration, but they've persevered to take the win here today. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Oh, here they are now. I always love seeing the independent teams do well. Williams have a long and storied history with F1, and I'm delighted to see them on the top step of the podium. Well, there we go then, guys. That is it for the race here today. And we pick up the win and the fastest lap, which is insane. So 26 points. We finish ahead of Verstappen and Leclerc, who join us on the podium. And crucially, we steal the win away from Max in his home Grand Prix. Perez P4 for the racing point. Aston Martin, team ahead of Albon, of course, our rival. Gasly, Stroll, Bottas, Norris, and Kvyat round out the top 10. Missing out the points, we have Vettel, Ocon, Ricardo, Sainz, Russell, Grosjean, Masashita, Magnussen, Giovinazzi and Hamilton, the only return from the race and the big one here today. We look at the driver standings and after that race we jump up to third place with that race win and we get right back in the mix. Verstappen, 25 points clear at the top, he's controlling the championship this year as we then look at the constructor standings. 
We move up to fifth place, equal on points with AlphaTauri, only four behind McLaren, so we're back in the mix there as well, and uh, we're on the hunt for that third place in both the drivers and constructor standings. But guys, that is it for the race here at Zandvoort. We're now going to move into the menu and put more upgrades heading into the next few races at Spain and Monaco. So let's jump into it and let's see what we can do. It doesn't get much better than a win at this track, does it? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a win, you know, a win's a win. It doesn't matter where it is, I think. We love a win and it's been a while, but we've got our first one this year. And yeah, uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I think to do it at this track in front of, you know, Max's fans, that was definitely uh, an interesting one for sure. You performed better than last weekend. What changed? Um, I think just the track suit that I can more, but we have made some work on the aerodynamic and that's gone a long way. Great, well, that's everything. Then there you go then, after the race, as you can see, we outscore Alex Albon by three points. And we actually, we're going to get a few points back in the rivalry after this weekend, you know, after out qualifying him and out racing him. It's been a good weekend for us, and we also gain a fair chunk of acclaim. But anyway, let's get into those upgrades. Now, good news, straight off the rip, the chassis upgrade we had planned, which was the cable assembly, which is this one here, has arrived. And there's been no issues, which is great. Now, in the chassis, we are second from bottom, we're ahead of Haas. Aerodynamics, we are still bottom, so we're going to go ahead and do some more aero work. Now, we're going to go for this one here. It's just a minor upgrade, but we're going to get it on the car. It costs over a thousand points, which I can't believe, but we're going to go for that one. And we're going to add on another upgrade here, I feel like. And we could go for a little engine one, actually, just to kind of stay on top on the engine side of things. I am tempted to go for maybe a little ERS upgrade just to improve the efficiency. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get that on the car as well. So that way we stay on top on the engine department and we're not slacking. So... Yeah, a few more performance upgrades on the way. You can see those two are now planned, and that's going to help close the gap to uh, Renault up ahead. Really, of course, Renault, Renault Alpine. And uh, with that, we can now move to the next race in Spain. And there we go then. We're ready for round six, of course, for the Spanish Grand Prix, guys, which will be the next episode. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's one. If you did, then feel free to leave a like. It really, really helps me out, guys. Let's try and hit 1,000... 1,100 likes, why not? Let's go for that target. That's going to be an ambitious like goal, so let's go for it. Subscribe for more daily F1 content. As always, thank you to the members of the channel for supporting. It really means a lot to me. And finally, check out the two videos on screen if you have not seen them. But guys, that's it from me here today, and I'll see you all next time.